If you're confused by the green packaging options available today, this is the series for you. What are the other considerations besides the material? Besides saying it's hemp, or besides saying it's ocean plastic, or besides saying it's post-consumer recycled board, what are the other distinctions? Welcome to the Green Packaging Series, episode number two. You're watching the Cannabis Packaging Show, we're Contempo Specialty Packaging. I hope you guys enjoyed episode one. I hope it was informative, giving you guys the big picture of what are the sustainable packaging options to review them one more time, recycling, post-consumer recycled material, renewable, reusable, and biodegradable additives. And we're learning so much literally on a weekly basis from last week's episode. There's already new things that I would have learned distinguishing it a little bit differently, but we're gonna keep rolling. You guys are gonna be part of this journey with us eventually, maybe it's six months, maybe it's a year. We're gonna be masters in this and you're gonna be masters as well, but it's gonna take a little bit of time. To do it right, it's gonna take a little bit of time. So today's episode, I wanna get into a few other things that are worth distinguishing around sustainable packaging. What are the other considerations besides the material? Besides saying it's hemp, or besides saying it's ocean plastic, or besides saying it's post-consumer recycled board, what are the other distinctions? A couple of them that come to mind are the design itself, right? So having a footprint that's not too large. So in the design phase, sustainability is something that you should be thinking about. Sourcing materials, producing materials in a way that's energy efficient, that's something you should be thinking about. But the biggest one that I've learned that I want to share is what's called end of life. Does someone want to give a definition of end of life? Determined mainly by the consumer. So in, in cases where sometimes we think something is being quote unquote recycled, it's really not. Um, sometimes it makes its way in the trash, sometimes it makes its way in the recycle bin, but can't actually be utilized and recycled properly by the recycling plants, the MRFs. But end of life is basically the end of end product and, and where it ends what up. Happens what happens to it? What's it happening? And there's two parts of end of life as I'm seeing it is you bring up one of the most critical points that a lot of people don't see is a lot of it's based on us as humans, what we do with the packaging. The responsibility ultimately comes on us as consumers, businesses, but also consumers. And also what are the recycling plants and composting facilities? What are they doing? So that's the personal side, what are we doing? But then there's also the side of end of life, which is what is the end of life of the package itself? And that's what I wanna get into and elaborate. And I want you guys to think that way too. It's easy to just sort of, they call it greenwashing, right? It sounds good. Hey, this is made out of hemp, or hey, this is made out of corn, or, but really think through what is going to happen to that package. You're gonna be, be disposing it where, and then what's gonna happen. There's another cool term, I think it's, it's wish cycling, right? That people coin where it's like, all right, I take this thing and I'm at home and I'm even guilty of it. It's like, I think I can recycle this and you toss it in the blue bin, but then what actually happens to that thing after? Is that gonna be properly processed by the recycling plant, et cetera, et cetera. Any comments before we uh, jump into the different options? I always like to throw that question at Tao and then she looks at me like I'm crazy. Fair, I'm always questioning what I'm recycling. You're questioning, what, what do you question? Is it just whether it can be recycled? So a lot of that comes down to the consumer education, right? So it's like the business side, how do we understand what we can do as, as the people that are leading the industry? And then there's the consumer side, how do we educate the consumer? Because the businesses can make the best decisions in the world, but if the consumers don't understand what's going on in the back end or what to properly do. I've actually been making the mistake all my life of thinking I can recycle plastic bags from grocery stores. I've been putting them in the blue bin. Yeah, definitely, most people do. That's like when you talk to the recycling plants, they say we get all this junk that can't actually be recycled. You're a wish cycler, I'm right? I'm a wish cycler, I gotta become an actual cycler. All right, good. Let's talk about the different options. So here at the end of life, again, trying to simplify this, I'm not sure this is like the technical way, but as I'm putting this together, here's how I've sort of thought about end of life. So where can a certain package end up? So number one is it can end up in a landfill, right? You take something, you're not mindful, throw it in the trash, you're in a rush, and it ends up in a landfill. So the end of life, if it's not a biodegradable material, is it's going to just sit there for hundreds of years. If it is biodegradable, it will biodegrade. But then within biodegradable, there's actually biodegradable and fake biodegradable that only biodegrades in certain temperatures and certain humidity levels, et cetera, et cetera. Oxy biodegradable. The additives under certain circumstances, sunlight and oxygen, 
will degrade, but it's under certain conditions only. In specific conditions versus true biodegradable, which exists. Oh, let's do a teaser. Oh my gosh, you gunned it. So this is a uh, polymer. Do not say bioplastics. That's I think I might have made that mistake in episode number one. They're no longer called bioplastics. They're called biopolymers. This is a unique biopolymer that we are bringing to the cannabis market fully biodegradable. The term biodegradable is a controversial term for various reasons. We'll get to that in another episode. Fully compostable and biodegradable. Contempopackaging.com. Fill out the form and we'll tell you more about what that is in a few months. <laughs> Actually, I'd say in 30 days we'll tell people what that is. All right, so ending up in a trash can, number one. Number two, recycling plant. Just saying something is recyclable is no longer that's no longer that appealing as an eco solution as I talk to people. Truly taking a recyclable material and sending it through a recycling plant that can accept that material is a very eco-friendly way of going about things, but you go to like outside a dispensary, there's trash cans full of polypropylene pop tops that are not being disposed of properly. So I think the market's thinking, hey, based on consumer behavior, like recycling is not as good of a solution. That's why we're looking at other options Less as well. Than 20% of product In the plastics world, less than 20, so 80%, the studies that you've read are saying that the, the waste is going, which is just unfortunate, but that's that's the reality. People are in a rush. They just, I don't, there's no recycling bin on the side of the road. Let's just throw this in there. So that is the other one, recycling. We don't want to wish cycle. We want to actually understand what is recyclable. There's more education coming out about that. The next option is composting. So composting facility, there's industrial composting facilities. And then I see a trend coming up, which is home composting. Several employees at Contempo have their own home composting setups and we're learning about that. And I see that only becoming a more and more um, continuous trend. You want to send the, you yeah, want to send this, this back in? Only products out there that is fully compostable. Fully compostable. Put that in your garden, it will turn into dirt that is completely plantable, completely safe, food grade material that is made from plants that is not plastic. The final residue is a biomatter that is not harmful. A lot of these items that we see in the market that are these like exciting things, the, the biomatter that they do degrade into though, sometimes gets into our water streams, gets into our soil, and it's not actually biodegradable. It's all about sustainability is how do I borrow something from the earth that then goes back into the earth as opposed to just saying like, hey, this is made out of such and such a material. That's what's cool about this one. We're doing more investigation. That's sort of our approach in this market is not making judgments too quickly because there's not a lot of research on this stuff. So we're going to be that source that looks at things, vets things, and over time gives our opinion on things to the best of our ability. And as research comes out, a lot of this stuff is so new, right? It's not really well researched. Also, a lot of times you talk to people who have certain polymers and they'll give a sales pitch on why theirs is so incredible, right? And then the other guy will give a pitch on why theirs is so incredible and why the other guys isn't. So um, maybe just the reality of, of, of the business world. So home and industrial composting, that is a trend that's increasing. You actually see it in like airports in places like Seattle and California and composting seems to be more, um, more and more of an option for people. The next one is upcycling and downcycling. Upcycling being taking, you know, plastic bags and bending them in a certain way to make jewelry or making a cool set of headphones that are, so it's taking something that would have been trash and upcycling it into something that is usable, and then downcycling, taking polyethylene bottles and grinding them up and turning them into a park bench or turning them into home insulation. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's upcycling and downcycling. So it's actually using the product and immediately turning it into something else. So that versus recycling, right? Recycling would grind it down. Is that the distinction? Recycling goes through a MRF. So that's, it goes into the facility, it gets ground up, and then it gets sold as finished pellets to someone who can reuse it versus upcycling, downcycling would be more taking that directly. And I don't know, maybe there's overlap actually. Yeah. And again, a lot of these recycling facilities, we'll do an episode in the near future where we actually show you what one of these looks like. But it's tons of it is labor intensive. It's a lot of just men and women who are sorting this stuff by hand, cleaning this stuff by hand. And so there's a lot of work that goes into this. It's not this automated perfect process where like it goes into the recycling and then it comes out a cube that just gets re reground into plastic. 
not only is it enough to just make it out of a, the proper plastic or the proper paper or material that can be recycled, it's based on the size, the dimension, how we're doing this, what cycling stream it's going in. Is it really going to be reutilized to, to be repurposed? And that's By the way, the focus that we have is. Materials recovery facility. What do we get? Facility correct? Yeah. All right, good. Um, all right, so there's so many distinctions here, and it, it, I see why people greenwash. Yeah. It's a hell of a lot easier, but it's, it's not, uh, not what we're about, not what we want to do. So um, bear with us. I hope you guys are finding this valuable even as we're having these conversations. What are the dis distinctions? And ultimately, we can all together pick what the best direction is. So upcycling, repurposing, and then from the first episode, we talked about just reusing, right? So like it's a product that you just take it, you reuse it, and you could call that the most green solution ever because there's no, um, the end of life is it sits there and has a purpose for you. Right, but ultimately there is an end of life because unless you're gonna reuse this thing forever, there is an end of life to that too. So, you know, you ha we have the case in our fashion, uh, our fashion history where, you know, fossil watches, they really took the world by storm, but they started displaying their watches in a, in a tin. And it was a beautiful presentation and then it was a recyclable, or excuse me, reusable tin that would be repurposed. So that was something really cool that, that was, was great. But ultimately, where does that tin go? When you're 90, unless you still have it on your desk collecting paper clips, it is gonna end up somewhere and there is an end of life to that too. You, you, you really nailed it right there. You were right about that one, yeah. So. But then there's also the idea just to give the other side of it where it's like, as I talked about in the first episode, the practical. So we can, when you try to perfect all this stuff, it, it becomes, there's so many distinctions that it's hard to actually do something. So I think, you know, just encouraging people to take steady progress on this stuff. And if you can, you know, poke a slight hole, as long as the hole you're poking doesn't appear to be something that's catastrophic, which we have to be careful about because um, all this stuff is new. But you got to go with a good solution and then slowly as, as the supply chain increases and as we learn more, we can go to great solutions. And that's what I think differentiates us as a company is we're not making these bold claims. You can see we're learning with you guys, but we're not ready to make these claims. But when we are, we will. But it's, it's a learning process and we don't want to just say F it. We want to do this right and we want to get it right. That's ultimately what we're about and what we're going to do. So we're going to get into the materials in the next episodes. Um, really deep dive, which I think a lot of you guys are looking for, right? It's just like, what are the materials and what are my options and what's out there? Um, Manny was busy designing products. He's on, you gotta come on the set now for, uh, get him, get him. for your, he's, uh, he's ready to go. This is Manny. First cameo on the show. Oh, come on to the set. So Manny's been de designing, developing a ton of new products, a new child resistant products. We have another arm of the team that's focused on sustainability. Um, but Manny's been really a, a critical part of our company's success in getting you know, what we're doing off the ground. So we're talking about the biopolymers and, and what is the end of life and how composting versus recycling versus, um, and I know you've done various initiatives in sustainability. So any, any final words? I know maybe I'm throwing you on the spot, but what do you think in terms of what, what should brands be thinking about in the area of sustainability? I think that educating your consumer in the long run on how to you know throw away and dispose of your products is really important huge there's enough to do like we can do a lot with making it green and sustainable but the end result is educating the consumer you killed it we we're talking about that earlier it's like you know we can do everything as industry leaders as people in the market as you know recycling facilities composting facilities government agencies right that there's only so much that that can be done before it's the consumer education side and maybe there's things we'll innovate there too. Like what can we do to, to make our packaging prompt consumers to understand what to do and how to dispose of it. So we got a lot of work ahead of us and, um, and we'll, we'll leave it there. Thanks, man, a great job. So the item of the week, we're showing the ceramic coated jars. Maybe I should have ended it there. It was kind of a nice ending. So ceramic coated jars, um, flour, edibles, topicals, ceramic coated, bamboo tops, any color, great pricing. You get to work with Contempo Specialty Packaging. I mean, come on, you can't, you can't do better than that. So there's foil on this one. This is, this is a beautiful design. Whoever designed this is a genius. She's sitting over there, but she's afraid to get on the camera. So um, yeah, the foil looks beautiful. We have customer samples too, but we don't, we don't show them. Is that, does that violate the non-disclosure agreement? Okay, good. There's so much going on, there's so much innovation, and 
we'll leave it at that. I don't want to say it too many times. Go to contemplapackaging.com. We'll see you next week. Contempo Specialty Packaging has beautiful CR packaging for every cannabis product. Visit contempopackaging.com.